Do you ever wonder how so many people can get their plants super red with ease while yours keeps getting greener and greener? It's like there's a hidden ingredient that only some people have discovered. In reality, it's actually just a few simple tricks that any level of Aquarius can make. You might even be shocked at how easy the solution is. And no, it's not just add more iron. People always ask how to get red plants, but they never ask why red plants. In other words, in order to know how to get them red, we need to know why they turn red. Make sense? Don't worry, I'm not gonna bore you with an hour-long biology lecture because I'll also end up falling asleep making it. Either way, plants can produce a certain organic compound called anthocyanin. In various stress conditions such as high light intensity, UV radiation, and nutrient deficiencies, etc., plants produce anthocyanins which serve in protecting the plant by acting as an antioxidant. I would job is to find out ways to stimulate this anthocyanin. It's often said that you need CO2 in order to grow red plants, which makes sense as CO2 aids in keeping plants healthy, which in turn has an indirect role in color development. Furthermore, anthocyanin is an organic compound which utilizes carbon. However, this isn't the case for all red plants. Red tiger lotus and Ludwigia super red are just a few examples of red plants that do not need CO2. So is there something else we can try? Iron. Shut up! It's not iron! <sighs> iron is used in the production of chlorophyll, not to make plant red. Even the Seachem Flourish iron page mentions nothing about its use case in making plants red. Even anthocyanins do not contain any iron in its chemical structure, which means that we can assume that there's no direct correlation in its production. Iron, much like CO2, aids in plant health, which indirectly influences color production. Again, stress is one way to increase anthocyanin production, and one of the best ways to do that is to deny them of nutrients. Yeah, you heard me right. There are two nutrients that are known to have an effect on anthocyanin production, nitrogen and phosphate. Limiting nitrogen can reduce chlorophyll, which allows other pigments to come through easier. This is exactly what I did in my old 12-gallon setup, where I got Rotala macranda to get this red. This hasn't been color adjusted in any way as well. As for phosphorus limitation, this can lead to the accumulation of sugars, which in turn can cause the development of anthocyanin. Furthermore, if iron and phosphate are doped together, they usually form a precipitate and make both unavailable to plants. So this may give off the impression that dosing iron helps, but it's more the phosphate deficiency that's stressing the plants. And this is why some people dose macro and micronutrients separately. Obviously, this isn't always the case when it comes to only one fertilizers, but that's a different topic for a different video. While nutrient limitation has been proven to work, it obviously comes at the cost of plant growth and health if you take it to the extremes. But there is one nutrient that you can dose higher that does improve anthocyanin production, and that is copper which isn't a good thing to have in excess due to its toxicity. So what gives? None of this is easy as you claimed. It's like all of this is just for views and clickbait. That's all you care about, huh? Just views, subscribers, and clickbait. Okay, okay, fine. I'll show you how easy it is. That, that's it? All you did was make the light turn more red. Yeah, I told you it was gonna be easy. But aren't you supposed to turn up the light intensity? Yes, but no. Let me explain. While intensity does play an important role, the color spectrum of that light is what really matters. Considering that plants produce more anthocyanin under red lighting as a mechanism to protect itself, there's a study on strawberries on anthocyanin production under red and blue light treatments. Results showed an increase in production under red light. I know, strawberries aren't an aquatic plant, but in terms of aquatic plants, they may get more red as they grow near the surface due to the increased intensity. Of course, this depends on how much red the light gives off. For example, this is Hygrophilia corymbosa compact. Usually, new growth stays green, but under high lighting, it can turn red. Except, the new leaves never turn red under high intensity until I turn down the blue and green lighting. Then boom, beautifully red. Even my Rotala h started to really shine, and I'm even using EI dosing, which has a ton of nitrogen and phosphate in it. But there is still something slightly above lighting, and that is genetics. When picking out red plants, it's obviously important to pick out the one that will show the most red. For example, Example, choosing between Rotala orange juice versus Rotala blood red. They're essentially the same plant, but different strains. Another example is red root floaters. These are floaters that I grew, and these are floaters that our Discord member, Darns, grew. Join the Discord, by the way. No matter what I did, I could never get them that red. 
I want you to also take caution against unrealistic expectations when it comes to growing red plants. A lot of the times, social media posts, including my footage, are edited in a way to increase their vibrancy. Please do not feel bad if your red plants are not able to get as red as some pictures that you see online. Plus, red plants can be quite difficult to grow, so make sure you have the best environment you can give them if you want success. Plants will not get as red if they're not healthy, of course. This might mean the hard truth of the addition of CO2, but that's not always the case, of course. Here's some videos showcasing a few red plants that do not require CO2 injection. 